So, does crop factor affect depth of field? Some internet resources say yes, and some say no. It's a binary choice, only one camp can be right, so let's find out which. Before we jump in, let's all speak the same vernacular. Aperture refers to the physical iris inside the lens that restricts light passage through the glass. Aperture notation is simply a mathematical communication of the diameter of the iris opening as viewed and measured from the front of the lens versus the lens's focal length. That's why we write it f slash pound sign, where the f is the focal length, the solidus is the division symbol, and the octothorpe, more commonly called a hashtag or pound sign today, is the aperture number. A 50 millimeter lens at f5 has a 10 millimeter opening when viewed from in front of the lens, while a 200 millimeter lens at f5 has a 40 millimeter diameter opening when viewed from in front of the lens. Due to the law of inverse squares and assuming a long lens as opposed to a telephoto, that 200 millimeter lens projects the same amount of light onto the sensor as the 50 millimeter lens at the same aperture. So the aperture number is a mathematical notation for light levels that reach your imaging media. The aperture diameter is measured from the entrance pupil, which is to say looking through the front of the lens, combined with the focal length is what creates depth of field. Now, to spoil the end of this video, crop factor has no influence on depth of field. Another note, if you're curious about the way that we notate apertures today, it's called the Congress or Congress. Honestly, have only ever read it, never heard it out loud. Anyway, the Congress 1900 system, and it has been in place since 1900. It replaced the Congress 1889 system. Anyway, when that system was released, there were many, many competing systems. If you'd like to learn some more about some of those competing systems and see how they compare, there's a link in the video's description to a table I put together of many of the historical systems, probably not all of them. Some very old lenses can still be found with aperture numbers that do not align with modern notations. In fact, I have two lenses like that, and believe me when I tell you, it really messed up some of the images that I took when I first started using them. Anyway, the specifics of those different systems are not important for this video, but it is a fun fact that the system we've been using is now, as of this video's recording, 123 years old. Another fun fact, always write your f-stop notation with a diminutive, which is to say lowercase letter f. The American Standardization Association, which handled these things back in the day, standardized the lowercase f notation as that diminutive f in 1961, and that rule still stands today. I use two lenses, a 58 millimeter 1.4 and a 28 millimeter 3.5 on three cameras of three different sensor sizes. I took shots at each full stop with each lens on each camera. I used the full frame camera as the composition reference shot and for tripod placement. I took a full set of photos on the full frame with each lens. With the smaller sensor cameras, I took the same shots from the full frame camera's position to see if the depth of field changed due to sensor size, and then I repositioned the smaller format cameras to have framing that matched the full frame camera's framing. Here's what this test demonstrates. When the cameras are positioned at the same point, zooming in, the depth of field does not change. On the recomposed image, because the smaller format sensors have to be further away from the subject, and because subject lens distance increases depth of field, the smaller format sensors had a greater depth of field at each aperture than did the full frame sensor when repositioned. So there was no change in depth of field when the small format sensors were in the same position as the full frame sensor. Now, some internet sources said there would be, and that begs the question, of course, why would a lens perform differently just because it's on a different sensor? The lens does not change. And so obviously, as we've stated, the, the answer 
is that sensor size does not affect depth of field, intrinsically does not affect it. Aperture is simply a mathematical notation of diameter of the iris opening versus lens focal length. Recall the 50 millimeter f5 and 200 millimeter f5 discussion. Lens focal length, optical design, media to rear element distance, and mount register distance are just a few of the actual factors that affect or alter depth of field. None of those have to do with the sensor. All of those have to do with the lens. So there you go. Crop factor has no effect on the actual depth of field. Crop factor affects apparent depth of field by eliminating periphery space and reducing sharpness by the effects of enlargement ratio on suitable circle of confusion sharpness. Crop factor also affects how photographers place themselves for image framing and that subject lens distance also affects depth of field at the same aperture. So how can you use this knowledge in a practical manner? Portrait shooters on smaller formats can benefit a lot from this because you can use a wider aperture with a recomposed image and greater subject camera distance to have your portrait subject be in focus, achieve a decent background separation, and also achieve that at a wider aperture than can us large format or larger sensor shooters. Wildlife photographers will immediately understand the benefit of crop factors. Product and real estate photographers who want to use tilt and shift adapters on legacy lenses can obtain a lot of full frame lens movement on a micro four thirds sensor. And if you don't like the natural light loss that occurs at image peripheries with all lenses, moving a full frame lens to a smaller sensor allows you to reduce image corner light loss without in-camera or post-processing corrections that can add noise. Then some camera benefits like sensor cache clearing rates and battery longevity, especially with video, exist for smaller formats, but those are specific to cameras and only partially due to format. So that's it, and I hope this helped explain and correct some faulty information out there. Different formats have different uses and places in the photographic world. Larger sensors are not inherently better than smaller, nor are smaller sensors inherently worse. Horses for courses, as they say, and honestly, isn't it exciting to live in a time when we can do so much with so many lenses and mounts and adapters to have such incredible creative control over our images? Well, thank you very much for watching, and I'll see you in the next video.